Okay, so, all right, story time. Um, how I got suspended my freshman year of college. Um, so I grew up pretty much my entire life being under like strict rule under like with my parents and I mean like really strict to the point where like I would come home with my report card I would bring a B and my parents would be pissed and I'm not just being stereotypical I'm not trying to like be racist against my own people like it's the truth like my parents were not happy with the B and if I got like an A they'd be like why isn't an A plus so that's like a little bit of background on like pretty much like how I grew up like I was always compared to all my other friends other people that got better grades than me so when I got accepted into UC Santa Cruz um, initially I was I was pretty upset because I wanted to go to UC Irvine and if you guys don't know anything about UC Irvine the only reason I wanted to go there pretty much is because 90% of that school is Asian. So I was like, oh, for sure, dude, 90% Asian. I'm gonna have the best chances of getting with the ladies at the Irvine. And then I got denied, and I was like, fuck. Um, I applied to UCLA. I got denied. I got denied to that. Santa Barbara got denied to there as well. Uh, applied to a couple of Cal States, got denied there. UC Santa Cruz was literally the last option. Like, it was my only choice. It was the only school that I got accepted to. So I was like, you know what? Like, fuck it. It's far away from home, but like, it, it's still the University of California. Like, I'll take it. So I went up there and um, I pretty much, <laughs> I pretty much ended up really, really not liking that school. Cause if any of you guys live up in NorCal, like during the fall and like the winter, it's really, really fucking gloomy there. So I was like, this sucks balls, dude. I don't know anyone here. I'm far away from all of my friends and I don't like the forest. Like I was not into nature at all. Like I grew up in the city my whole life. So I was like a city boy, you know? So going to a school like smack dab in the middle of the forest, I was just like, eh, like whatever, like fuck this shit. And so I pretty much had that attitude for, I wanna say the first, the first month or two of my freshman year, I just went to class, I took notes, didn't talk to anybody, studied for tests, took them, and just like rinse and repeat. Um, I had a dorm mate, but even with him, conversations were really like shallow, like surface level stuff. Like, oh, how was class? Like, oh, cool. Like, oh, you wanna get dinner? All right, cool. But I never really like reached out to my dorm mate or anyone in my hall, actually. I was just very to myself and I was like, this fucking sucks and this is going to suck. But then I realized that, you know what I mean? Like. If I have that mindset of this is gonna suck balls, then I'm gonna have the worst year of my life or worst uh, fucking, you know, however many years I was gonna be at that school. I was like, so after a little while, I was like, you know what? Me being bitchy and pissy about the situation that I'm in is not gonna help. So I'm just gonna make the best of it. So I started talking to my roommate. We started hanging out. And from that, I started to meet um, like everyone else that lived in my hall. And this leads me to my next point. Um, one night, me and my friends decided to smoke. I had smoked a couple times in high school before, you know, I got to Santa Cruz, but I never really, like, considered myself a stoner. I did it a couple times, and that was it. And um, I grew up being, like, super anti-drug. Like, all my friends started smoking pot before me in high school. And when they did, like... We would like be like, all right, dude, for sure, let's grab some dinner. Let's go to Chicken Dijon. They got some bomb dishes. Let's get it. And then I'd show up there, and of course, all my other friends were high, and I was the only one that was just like, like, what the fuck, guys? Like, what is? You guys are wasting your life away. You know that? You. I'm so disappointed in you guys. Like, what the fuck? Like, legitimately, I was that fucking judgmental, which is pretty ironic now, considering that like, I smoke weed every day now, and I welcome my followers to the Ganja team. So, <laughs> um, we ended up smoking that night and we just went out like on a hike just in the middle of fucking nowhere, like me and a couple of my dorm mates. And that night I had so much fun. And also we were listening to Bob Marley. So I was like, I get it. I understand why. And I ate some food too. So I was like, dude, I was like, I think, I think I've had the wrong impression about we this whole time. Like I was under the impression that like, if I smoked weed, I would uh, rob a bank, I would uh, get no one life, and I would just sit on a couch, and that I would be kicking it in a McDonald's drive through not see a kid, you know, riding her tricycle, and then accidentally hit her because my reaction speed were uh, a little bit delayed. Yeah, so none of that happened to me. 
I realized that weed is actually not that bad at all. Started to really like it. And from there, that's when I started to experiment with other drugs. I was like, hmm, I really like weed. And then one of my roommates was like, hey, like, uh, we're going to take shrooms next week. Are you down? I was like, all right. Um, never tried it before, but fuck it. Let's experiment. I was like, I'm eight hours away from my parents. They can't check up on me. I have more than enough money in my bank account to last me because <laughs> I actually jacked all my books my entire freshman year. I saved about, I want to say like over $600 because <laughs> I stole all my books. And with that money that I saved, I used it all on drugs. Actually, no, no, no. I take that back. I used about 500 on drugs and about $100 on food, I think. <laughs> so then I took mushrooms, had a blast, was laughing for fucking hours, bros. Like, I swear to God, I had like a goddamn 36 pack. And we were just like out in the middle of a field, just chilling. And like, we were listening to music and I feel like shrooms, like that first time really had like an emotional impact on me. And I know like, that's not really unique. Like shrooms are kind of like known for being like an emotional drug, I guess. But I just had a lot of fun. I was like, dude, like I grew up thinking that drugs were like the worst thing ever. Like, and I'm starting to like experience one of these, or I'm starting to experience them one by one, realizing that the media fucking just it's, it was just a scare tactic. Like they had no idea. They have like no idea what the fuck they're talking about, dude. Weed is amazing. Shrooms is amazing. So my friend's like, "Oh, dude, you really like shrooms? And you're kind of bummed out that it only lasts four hours? How about some LSD?" I was like, "LSD? What is this?" They're like, "Dude, it lasts about three times as long as shrooms. Uh, you see crazy ass shit visually, and it does not taste like asshole." I was like, "Doesn't taste like butthole? Oh my god, dude. I'm in. Let's do it." Took acid my first time, um, ended up getting really impatient, um, really impatient. I was about two hours in and I was like, I don't fucking feel anything. This is bullshit. Let me get two more tabs. My friend's like, no, 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 this is your first time. You really should take it easy. I was like, here's $20, give me two more tabs. So I took two more, which is a total of four, waited another hour and I was like, dude, like, I think this is some bunk shit. Like, I'm not feeling it. Like, I have no idea what's going on. This is bullshit. So then I waited a little bit longer. Got impatient again. I was like, all right, dude, I got 10 more bucks. Give me one more tap. And he was like, Sam, you've already taken four your first time. Trust me, just wait it out. You will feel it. I was like, nope, I'm fucking done waiting, dude. I could have smoked a bowl and felt high like that. This is bullshit. Like, I'm getting some bunk ass shit. So he was like, all right, fine. You want it? Here. So then I took that tab. About... I'm gonna say like maybe 10, 15 minutes later, we're just outside smoking stoves and I fucking, that shit hit like goddamn train boys. And I'm telling you, a train. I went from smoking a cigarette, just chilling, right? Like, to starting to see like shapes and animals in the smoke as I was exhaling it. I remember just being like, what the fuck? Like, you guys see that shit? And they're just like, what? No, dude, I'm tripping out over something else. So just, I was just like, I was dazzled, dude. Oh my gosh, I was seriously seeing like different clouds and different animals and different like objects like trees just like form right in front like as I was exhaling it. I was like, dude, I think I'm starting to feel it. What the fuck? And I also started to get trails. So like when I would move my hand, I would move my hand and then it would move five seconds later. So I was just like, what the fuck? And then whenever I would spit, it would look like I spit twice because of the trails. Or like the traces, I guess. So I'll be like... <laughs> so it was just like double of everything. So I was like, holy shit, like, I'm starting to feel this now. And so like me and my friends decided to take a walk out on a street with no street lights. It was pitch dark. And I fucking shit you guys not. As we're walking down a straight path, I see a white bridge unfolding in front of me. Like piece by piece. Just like little by little as I'm walking. Like it's unfolding on my feet. And then there's this white railing that comes up and it's just like going down infinite. Like I remember just looking down. I'm like, dude, the fucking bridge just kept on creating itself. Like, mm, mm, mm. and so I just kept walking. And I was like, dude, this is some Alice in Wonderland shit. Like, what the fuck, dude? This shit is awesome. And uh, pretty much the entire night, we were just out like in the field. Just fucking absolutely tripping and just having the time of our life. And then after that, I went on an acid binge where I did acid every week for, I think, two months straight. 
If you guys never done acid and you do plan on doing it in the future, don't binge on it. I'm telling you guys, it will leave permanent effects on your body, which I suffer from now, unfortunately. But I mean, live, learn from me. Don't binge acid. I had too much fun with it. I was like, this is my drug. I actually even like stopped buying weed just because I wanted more acid. And it was intense. Um, one time, like Transformers, <laughs> kind of, kind of. And then um, my friend one time, he was like, oh dude, I got some, I got some acid in a bottle. So you don't even have to put it on your tongue. You just take a couple of drops. And he was like, well, Sam, like I am planning on selling this, but I gotta make sure the product is good, right? And I was like, yeah, I, I, I'll be your guinea pig. I, I, I test it for you, no problems, no problems. For so, for so, dude. I'm looking out for you, bro. I test it. <laughs> so then I took four, I took four hits of acid and then went to class. Took four drops, grabbed my backpack, went on a fucking bus and went to class. Yep, that, that, was, a, that was a good idea. That was a good fucking idea. And my professor, guys, he had a beard, right? Like, like a great big bushy beard. I don't know if you guys get that reference. Uh, but yeah, he had like a huge beard. And as soon as I got off the bus, that's when I started to like notice. I'm like, holy shit. Like, why am I seeing geometric shapes in everything? Like the pot plants, like, um, or like not the pot plants, but like the plants that were in pots, the trees, the, like the cement, everything like was just simplified to like geometric shapes. And then I step into class first thing I see is my professor standing there with the whiteboard and his beard no fucking joke guys I am not shitting you his beard was like a creature dude I, I just saw his beard it was just moving like this it was like just all over his face dude and I had to pretend like I totally was not tripping seeing the goddamn like fucking monster of a beast beard and I had to just sit down in class and be like <clears throat> okay, taking notes, taking notes. Okay, trying to take notes. And uh, whenever he would write something on the whiteboard, guys, like, let, like let's say he started writing like on the top of it, he would write one line, it would just start bleeding down to the bottom. He would be writing the second line and I wouldn't be able to see that because the first line was bleeding into the second one. And it got to the point, guys, where I couldn't take notes because all I saw were letters and numbers and periods and commas at the bottom of like the whiteboard where like the races are and shit and i remember just being like what the fuck <laughs> and i just looked at like my notebook where i was writing the notes guys seriously that was like a unicorn there was like some crazy egyptian hieroglyphics like i don't know dude i think there was like some chinese on there like i had no idea what was on there and i was just like all right dude uh, all right well so much for taking notes uh, let's get out of here so then i left class went back to my dorm room and uh, pretty much had to study for a test, which uh, I wasn't able to because I was tripping on four hits of acid. And uh, yeah, that it kind of makes studying hard. <laughs> uh, went to class. Yep. I went to class and it was the trippiest experience of my life. Oh my gosh. And um, so then after that, I experimented with other things. Um, I did salvia a couple times. Man, I don't really like salvia. I think salvia sucks balls. It's overpriced. And then I did coke a handful of times, but it was pretty much right around that time where when I was doing all of these things, I started neglecting important things like going to class, making sure I don't fail, not using shitty excuses to not go to class. Yeah. Um, my freshman, like my freshman quarter, I got two B's, I got two B's and an A. Winter quarter, two D's and an F. <laughs> so then I got put on academic probation and they're like, okay, for spring quarter, you have to get at least a 2.0 GPA. I was like, dude, no problem. No fucking problem. I've been getting 4.0s my entire life. I can do 2.0. And, um, by the end of spring quarter, I got, uh, a 1.8. And I was hoping that they would round up, but I don't think they round up for people that they don't think are, should be at their school. So, um, 
they're pretty much like you didn't meet the requirements that you needed to of getting a 2.0 GPA by the end of spring quarter. You are hereby suspended from this university as well as all other UCs for five years. They're like, you can appeal in front of like, a, you know, not really like a full on court, but like a, a panel of uh, different people that were in charge of the college. Like you can appeal if you want, but that's your only option right now. If they don't accept your appeal, you're kicked out of this school. You can't apply to any other UCs for five years and pretty much your parents are going to fucking kill you. <laughs> So my dumbass, like, of course, I was like, I'm going to try to appeal. Nope. Didn't even come close. And so I had to go home knowing that I would not be coming back up there next year. And I had to tell my parents that. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, it was like, PT was one of the scariest moments of my life in gaming. But having to tell my parents that news was by far the scariest experience of my life. Like, IRL. Like, and if you guys are Asian, you guys feel me. You guys feel me. And if you're not Asian, you should still feel me because you guys know Asian parents are mad ham about the goddamn academics. And so, um, I got really nervous and I never gave them, I never told them about it uh, because they sent it to me in email. And so for weeks, I was just thinking about it. I was like, oh, fuck, fuck. Like, how am I going to tell them? Like, there's no excuse. There's no way that I can get myself out of this. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, at that time, I was like, my parents are going to kick my ass. They're going to kick me out of the house, and they're going to disown me. Like, I've never, never got even, like, anything below a C in my whole life. So I was like, dude, I'm screwed. I wasted over $20,000 worth of money just to have fun and do drugs and not go to school. <laughs> so one day I come home and my dad is there and he's holding a letter and I'm sure you guys know where this is going this was the letter that was sent to me by like by email telling me that I'm suspended from that school I can't come back I can't even reapply to any UCs for five years my dad just looks at me and he's like what's this oh Oh shit, um, yo dad, dude, did I ever tell you how much I love you, dude? You were so great at dry cleaning, dude. You are the best. I, just, I had nothing, guys. I had fucking nothing. And I had to, I had to face the music <laughs> with my parents. And, um, here's the craziest thing about this story. Instead of getting what I thought was going to happen as far as their reaction and what they would do to me, I got the complete opposite. Like, I mean, complete opposite, like 180. My parents just looked, and I feel like this is worse. And I mean, I'm sure some of you guys can relate to me. Instead of getting super pissed, they just gave me the really disappointed look. Just like, how could you, like, how could you do this to us, Sam? Like, we worked our ass off to send you to college. Like, how can you do this to us? I was just like, oh my God, dude. That, oh my gosh. It was fucking terrible. I just felt like such a piece of shit of a son. And my parents were like, well, so I guess you should go to a community college, figure out what you want to major in, and then transfer out, right? And I was just like, uh, yeah, um, what the fuck? I'm just going to say this right now. Um, first of all, why don't I have two black eyes yet? Why aren't you holding a frying pan? And why am I not on fire? Because, uh, what a fuck. <laughs> Am I getting punked right now? Where is Ashton Kutcher? What is going on? Stop playing the games. It's not cool. Don't mess with my emotions. <laughs> I was just in shock. I was like, what, 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 what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Like, this is, this is not happening. Like, no way. And so, like, you know, I mean, this is kind of like the end of the story. Um, that's when I went to community college. That's when I discovered acting. Um, that's when... I discovered that like this is something that I actually really want to do maybe make a career out of it um, decided to go for that major took all the requirements uh, applied to a few Cal States uh, the one I got into was Cal State Long Beach and I applied to the drama program and I got accepted um, I majored in theater the two years I was there graduated started working at Starbucks this is when I just this is when I discovered Twitch. Um, hold on. 
Oh, um, Cashmere Cat, thanks so much for that follow. Uh, sorry, I know I'm missing a lot of stuff in chat, guys. I'm just trying to like keep the story going and try to wrap it up so it's not too long. But yeah, that's, you know, then I went to Cal State Long Beach, majored in acting, had a fucking blast, did plays, did short films, met really cool people. Um, some of those people being huge mentors to me, like who have like shaped me to be like the person I am today. And after that, yeah, I started working at Starbucks. I discovered Twitch, saw DreamRick was streaming. I got curious about it, started being a viewer on Twitch. And then I got a PS4, started streaming myself, got this office job early this year. And I mean, and that's where I am today. <laughs> so um, as much as I do still feel really bad for all the money and time that was wasted that freshman year, I don't think I would be here today if it wasn't for all those events so i live with no regret and obviously like i've learned a lot from that so it was it was a good learning experience but it was definitely one of the scariest like having to tell my parents that but yeah there's like my freshman year in a nutshell <laughs> slash like the rest of college thanks for sharing this with us sam yeah no worries no worries i mean i hope the story was interesting for you guys i hope you guys got a, a few laughs out of it but yeah i mean I hope that was a good story. <laughs> it's not one of my proudest moments, that's for sure, but I'm almost glad that like I flunked out of college because I got to go to community college with my old high school friends. I got to go to Cal State Long Beach and meet some really cool people and professors. If, if I didn't flunk out, I would have no reason to kick it here after my community college classes. I wouldn't have saw DreamRex streaming. I wouldn't have even joined Twitch, I don't think. And so I'm... I don't regret any of that because I honestly think all those experiences have added up to lead me here today, which I think was well worth it because I love streaming. I fucking love it. I've been almost doing it for a year now and to just have all you guys' support, to have people who I've never seen like your actual face, where some of you guys I have because you guys are streamers, but to be able to like entertain you guys, to talk to you guys, to like share like other you know share stories with each other to make you guys feel better to like to give you guys a laugh when you guys are going through a rough patch like all these things like i fucking love about twitch i love that twitch has been able to make me make all these experiences happen you know so i mean i don't mean to like get all like super feelsy and stuff but there's like a little little chunk of my life story right there <laughs> good story sam hey thanks rcv highlight this story 